Hi everyone, I'm Yun Tong. I'm here to present Marlin, which is our work that constructs pre-processing ZK Snarks with universal setup. This is a joint work with Ali, Mary, Prayush, Noah, and Nick. Okay, let's dive in. Uh, before we talk about pre-processing Snarks, let's first take a look at succinct non-interactive arguments. Uh, we have the prover and the verifier. The prover has a specific function function that is applying to a public input and a private witness. The prover wants to convince the verifier that it knows the secret witness so that the function can be satisfied. Uh, and naturally, the prover is going to run in time that is proportional to the computation time. But the important thing here is that the proof that the prover sends to the verifier is exp exponentially smaller than the computation itself. Verification sometimes is linear to the computation, but if you want succinct verification, you should be also run uh, exponentially faster than the computation. One of the goals of our work is to achieve succinct verification, but the question is when this succinct ver verification comes from. Depending on the type of computations, there are two options. If, if you are doing machine computation, you can uh, leverage the uniformity of the computation. Uh, then it is possible for the verifier to run in time that is proportional to the description of the computation, not the size of the computation. But if you are working in the circuit computation model, in general, the description of the circuit is as large as the computation itself. So when you design a snark for circuit, you might wonder how could it be possible that the verifier to run in time sublinear in the circuit size, since at the very least, the verifier should know about the circuit and there's no smaller description than the circuit itself. The point here is that you can somehow pre-process the circuit to get the succinctness. Uh, there is uh, an offline procedure that pro produce a short cryptographic summary of the circuit and do, then you can use it many times to verify many proofs relative to the same circuit. Uh, in this talk, we're going to focus on the second one, the pre-processing snarks for the circuit computation. There are a couple of ways to pre-process the circuit. The first is to use the circuit-specific setup. Uh, you have a setup algorithm which takes the randomness and the circuit as the input and the outputs a proving key. We have seen many constructions in this form and uh, the most efficient snarks is also in this form. The pro but the problem with this solution is that to do this circuit-specific setup, you either require a trusted party or an expensive MPC protocol to generate the proving key. And the tr this trusted setup needs to be done once per circuit, so it is not scalable, especially when you want to change circuits for different applications. Another option is to use the universal setup. How it works is that you have a single trusted setup set up for all circuits of a given maximum size n that you want to support. Uh, it outputs a reference string and uh, you feed the reference string and actual circuit into a deterministic uh, specialization process to get the circuit specific proving key. Note that this specialization process includes no randomness and is supposed to be entirely deterministic. So you only have one setup and use the reference string for all circuits. There are a few ways we know how to do the universal setup. Uh, first, of all, first of all, we can use the universal circuit with the circuit-specific setup. But all the best solution we know for the universal circuit is at uh, least a cause and linear in the circuit size. Uh, in particular, they have a poor and symptomatic for the prover. To overcome this, people start, start to design new snarks specialized in the setting of universal setup. And the first work in this line is GKMMM in 2018, but it's mostly a feasibility result because the setup and the pre-processing is quadratic. Next, we have Sonic, uh, which is the first snark that achieves the optimal uh, symptomatics in the universal setup setting, but it has a large constant. In particular, it is 100 times uh, worse than the fast circuit specific snarks. Uh, in summary, the basic problem, basic problem here are that there are a number of snarks with universal setup, but they are all inefficient. And there is no clean methodology to construct better snarks. Our goal is to create a methodology to create universal setup snarks and use this methodology to construct a concretely uh, efficient snark. 
So the first contribution of our work is that we provide a methodology for constructing efficient universal snugs. In the end, we have the first theorem, which is a compiler uh, that constructs 60 snugs uh, with universal setup. It takes two components in uh, the algebraic holographic proof and uh, extractable polynomial commitment. Uh, it takes in these two components to produce uh, pre-processing ZK snugs with universal setup. Note that the algebraic holographic proof is a new notion, which we will explain later. But the key idea here is that we connect the holography of PCPs with preprocessing uh, for SNARKs. The nice, the, the nice thing about this compiler is that this modularization is not only very uh, benefit, very beneficial for understanding the construction, but also for the stock de designer, you can go ahead and focus on improving each of these components individually. And our theorem guarantees that as long as your construction satisfy the uh, requirements of our compiler, then you can just plug in uh, your components and you can get a secure snarks with universal setup. Actually, if you look at the, all the exciting works for the past year, such as Sonic, Planck, VRAM, Marlin, and the Supersonic, their core contributions are to optimize one of, the, uh, one of those two components. The second part of our contribution is that we provide an efficient ingredients instantiating our compiler. We provide an efficient AHP for CSAT and a variant of extractable polynomial commitment. We plug these two components into our compiler to obtain Marlin, an efficient ZKSNOX for CSAT with universal setup. Uh, our SNOX achieve a, a symptotics of the best circuit uh, specific SNOX, just like Sonic, but the concrete parameter is much better than Sonic. Our third contribution is to provide an implementation in Rust that is available online. Uh, it turns out that our compiler also provides a sort of modularity that enables a clean and efficient implementation. Uh, we compiled our Marlin com implementation with the state-of-the-art uh, circuit-specific uh, preprocessing SNARKs, which is Gross 16. Uh, and what we found is that for the relevant performance, such as prover time and verify time and uh, proof size, we are less than like an order of magnitude of away from the state of the art scheme. In particular, the prover time is about 6.6x and the verified time is about 4x and the proof size is about uh, 4.5x off. As people continue optimizing the two components, the HP and the polynomial commitment, we can see even better results. In this talk, we will focus on the methodology and the compiler because it shows a clean and a straightforward way to construct pre-processing SNARKs. Here is the paradigm of our um, methodology. In the next few slides, we are going to present each of these components and finally see how it combines these two components to get, the, get out the SNARKs we want. Uh, our compiler really highlights the key to achieving preprocessing and hence succinct verification is what we call the holography. Okay, let's first see what uh, algebraic holographic proof means in our context. I'm going to introduce algebraic proof first. So at a high level, algebra, algebraic proof is just an interactive proof where the proofers message messages have a kind of uh, algebraic structure. In particular, in our formalization, we restrict the uh, proofers messages to be low degree polynomial uh, for example, it can be a univariate polynomial with degrees that is much smaller than the size of the field. And when the verifier receives the message from the prover, the verifier does not need to read the entire low degree polynomial. Instead, it can access the polynomial as an oracle. For example, the verifier can query the value of the prover's polynomial at arbitrary points without paying cost to actually read and evaluate the polynomial. And then the verifier replies with some challenges because we are working in the public coin setting. So the verifier only sends uh, random messages to the prover. This continues until the prover sends all of the polynomial P1 to Pn and the verifier gives the final challenge. After that, the verifier provides a set of points that are used to query each of these polynomials. 
Once all of these polynomials give the evaluation, evaluation results, the verifier will plug those evaluations into the decision procedure and uh, decide whether or not to accept. Okay, this is a paradigm of the algebraic proof. Uh, and the properties of algebraic proofs are very similar to the standard properties of interactive proofs. We have completeness. Whenever the prover has a satisfying witness and follows the protocol, uh, the verifier will accept. We also have the proof of knowledge. Whenever the verifier accepts, that means the prover actually knows a corresponding witness in his head. And then finally, we have a notion of bounded purely zero knowledge. Basically, what it means is that as long as the verifier doesn't make too many queries to the polynomials, then it learns nothing about the witness. Although there might be some other advanced notion of zero knowledge, we don't discuss them here because our compiler only needs this query bounded version. Okay, the algebraic proof so far looks nice, but it still has some problems. You know, we are working towards succinct verifications. So what's the complexity of the verifier in the algebraic proof? The, proof, the problem right now is that the verifier's complexity is at least linear in the size of the circuit because it has to read the circuit as the input. And if the verifier needs to do some more complex computation based on the circuit, the complexity could be even more than linear size of the circuit. That's not what we want. Since our goal is to build a succinct verifier that has at most logarithmic in the circuit size. So the solution is to take the circuit out of the verifier, but the question is how to do that. The verifier still needs to know some sort of information from the circuit in order to check the computation. What we want to do is that instead of having the verifier read the entire circuit, we want the verifier to be able to access the, the algebraic version of the circuit. And this is uh, where holography comes in. We have uh, some sort of holographic preprocessing algorithm, which encodes the circuit and uh, provides uh, uh, and provides the algebraic encoding of the circuit. In our formalization, it is a kind of uh, polynomial representation. And now the verifier can access uh, these polynomials as uh, Oracle, just like the, just like the uh, prover's message. So the prover and the verifier right now can uh, interact with each other as before, uh, send, the send the message and replies the and it replies the uh, uh, challenge, but and now the verifier is going to provide the going to provide the uh, uh, query point not only to the previous message but also but also the uh, circuit the circuit polynomial. So in this way, we get rid of the linear dependence on the circuit, and uh, the decides. And the verifier will plug in the evaluation both from the previous polynomial and a circuit polynomial to decide whether or not to uh, to to accept. Right now, the uh, so as long as the query and the decision procedure are at most logarithmic in the circuit size, the overall ver verification procedure is succinct. Now we have the uh, algebra uh, holographic proof. Let's take a look at the second one. So at a high level, a polynomial commitment is a cryptographic uh, primitive that allows people to commit to the polynomial and later prove that the evaluations of the committed polynomials at some chosen challenge point. Uh, and the verification should be more efficient than evaluating the polynomial directly. So, so we have a setup algorithm for the polynomial commitment scheme, which takes in the maximum degree that we want to support and outputs the universal committer and verifier keys that work for any polynomial uh, with degree up to the input maximum degree. And the later the committer can use the com can use the committer key to commit to the polynomial and send the commitment to the verifier. This commitment is supposed to be smaller than the size of the polynomial. Okay, the verifier now wants to know the value of the committed polynomial at some point Z. So it sends the challenge point Z to the committer 
Uh, then the committer evaluates the polynomial at that point and provides a proof of evaluation of the commitment as a challenge point. The committer sends both the evaluation and the proof back to the verifier. The verifier checks the proof of evaluation to make sure that the committed polynomial actually does evaluate to the value v at the challenge point z. So the properties that we want of the polynomial commitment are also similar to the AHP. We want to we want to completeness. If the polynomial evaluates as a, to the value v at z, then the verifier will accept. We also want extractability. That whenever the verifier does accept, then the commitment contains a polynomial of degree at most d. And then finally, we also want hiding, which says as long as the verifier doesn't make too many queries, it learns nothing about the polynomial except information such as the uh, evaluation. Uh, this query bound is very necessary because, for example, if the verifier makes up to maximum degree d plus one queries, then it can interpolate the polynomial and learns all the coefficients. This is the syntax of the default polynomial commitment scheme, which was first proposed in Kate et al. paper in 2010. Uh, but to plug into our compiler, we actually need more properties. For example, each round in the HP, the prover may send multiple polynomials to the verifier. And we also want to be able to commit to polynomials across multiple rounds, and uh, also the extractability holds for all those polynomials. We may also want to be able to open polynomials not at a single point, but at a set of query points. And finally, we want to be able to have different degree bounds for different polynomials. To do so, we introduce a trim process, which takes in the public parameters output by the setup process, and also the degree bound information for each polynomial. That is because the per polynomial, per polynomial bound may be much smaller than the maximum degree bound capital D. And we don't want the verifier to read the whole public parameters and become non-succinct. Uh, note that this trim process will output a, a sync, succinct committer key and a verifier key is specialized to the input degree bound. But unlike the setup, there is no secret generated during the trim process, uh, which means it is totally public and deterministic. Basically, what trim does is to figure out which part of the public parameters are useful for the given per polynomial bound. Okay, the default polynomial commitment doesn't provide those properties in a straightforward way, so we need to do a little bit more work to make sure all the other properties hold when we introduce these additional properties. So you can take a look at our paper for more technical details. All right, we have both of our components, the HP and the polynomial commitment. Let's take a look at how our compiler actually works. And the key idea here is to leverage the holography in the AHP to achieve preprocessing. Let's first recap what a preprocessing snarks with the universal setup is. It has those four algorithms, the setup, how to put the universal parameters, and also circuit specific preprocessing, and the proof and the verification. Uh, and we also have those standard properties. We won't go over this since it's a standard notion. Uh, let's see how our compiler constructs each of these algorithms in a step-by-step -step manner. We start with the universal setup. So in the universal setup, you're taking the maximum size of the circuit that you want to support, and you ask the, ask the AHP, this is the hey, this is the maximum circuit size you want to support, and what's the maximum possible uh, degree bound D. And you run the polynomial commitment setup to obtain the public parameters for the polynomial commitment scheme. And then the public parameters will uh, support any preprocessing output. So you just output these public parameters as the universal pu public parameters. Okay, let's take a look at how to do circuit-specific preprocessing. Now you can get in the uh, universal public parameters as well as the circuit. First of all, you run the AHP preprocessing, uh, which outputs algebraic encoded form of the circuit, or we say the circuit polynomials. Then you run the trim algorithm to obtain the circuit-specific committer key and verifier key. Finally, you just commit to this circuit 
polynomials using the polynomial commitment and output the circuit prover key and the verifier key. Okay, now let's take a look at the main protocol. So we have the argument prover and the verifier. Well, the prover has the witness and the verifier doesn't. The argument prover simply runs the AHP prover and whenever the AHP prover produces a polynomial, for example, the P1, instead of sending the whole polynomial directly, the prover is going to send the commitment C1, CM1 to the argument verifier. And then the argument verifier asks the uh, AHP verifier the randomness and sends it to the argument prover. This is continue until the prover runs out of the polynomials. Uh, and now we start the query and decision, decision phases. Uh, the verifier runs the AHP query algorithm to get a set of query points. And the argument prover evaluates those ev polynomials at the query set and sends back the evaluation. And now the verifier can run the decision uh, process uh, to decide whether or not to accept. But this is still not uh, sufficient because the verifier needs to make sure the pro prover gives the correct evaluations. So the prover uses the polynomial commitment to produce a proof of evaluations uh, to prove that when the prover's um, polynomials evaluate the, the query set, it results in these evaluations. Then the argument verifier needs to also check the evaluation proof is correct. So far, we have the interactive pr protocol, and we can make it non-interactive by using the file Shamir because all these messages are random. Uh, this construction is very clean, and the idea is to use the holography to preprocess to the circuit, and then instead of sending the polynomial, we send the polynomial commitment to prove the evaluation are correct. The nice thing of our compiler is that it does not only provide a clean construction, but also all of the properties like completeness, proof of knowledge, zero knowledge, for, uh, and this, all this property follows very cleanly from the corresponding properties of two components, the AHP and the polynomial commitments. We also get succinctness if both the AHP verifier and the PC verifier are succinct. Okay, so that's it. Uh, in conclusion, in this talk, we have seen how to construct a universal preprocessing zx uh from algebraic holography proof and uh, extractable polynomial commitments. In this paper, you can find more details about those components, such as our efficient uh, AHP for CSAT to evaluate low-degree extension for arbitrary circuit. You can also see the extended KZG10 uh, polynomial commitments to achieve additional properties required by the, our compiler. All right, thanks for listening. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, this are the link to our paper and the implementation, and feel free to take a look for more details. Thanks.